What's going on guys, Arrow here and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, I want to talk to you guys more about Xenoblade Chronicles 3 as we just had our big Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Direct and it gave us a ton of new information about the game. There's actually a lot of information, much more than I was expecting. And of course it was a kind of long direct with like 24 minutes of stuff and there's really a couple of things that were kind of just hidden away that they didn't even talk about and a lot of things that people might have just glanced over and not really focused on. So I figured I would make this video for you guys and pretty much try to narrow it down and show you guys everything that was inside of the Xenoblade 3 Direct and give it to you in the most concise way possible. Now I do apologize for the editing in this video in advance. I know for my Xenoblade videos I usually go all out and have some cool effects and clips and everything. But for this video because there's so much information here if I want to get this video out the day that the direct also happened I pretty much just have to show you like screenshots about what I'm talking about with the direct. And I think that that's better too than having like two seconds of footage being played over and over. So hopefully you guys can understand and I still think that it'll get the point across from what I'm talking about. Alright, so jumping right into it, the first thing that we got to see as soon as the Direct opened up was this theater-like setting, and this theater is actually very similar to the Olethro Theater from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, where if you remember, that was the theater that Rex and Pyra and Van Damme and all of them visited, and it was like Minoth who was doing like a play about Adam and Mithra and all of that, and they got to sit down and watch it, so it does look like that that theater is the actual same theater that we see here inside of Xenoblade 3, because of course Uriah is a big part of Xenoblade 3's world, so it wouldn't surprise me if this is the same exact theater from Uriah so it is pretty cool to see. Now in this trailer we get to see a very interesting group of characters and it definitely seems like that this group of characters is who they're trying to set up as like the main villains for this game so far. It definitely seems like that these are like the bad guys even like the wild ride character from the last trailer comes and he turns into like one of these other looking kind of things and he's with this group here so it definitely seems to me like these are going to be the bad guys. Now a big thing that they did confirm inside of this direct is that every character has 10 years to live and of course this was a big theory that a lot of people had because it was leaked by GameStop and it is confirmed now that every character only has 10 years to live since they become a soldier. Now something else that's also revealed by the Van Damme character when talking to Mio is that Mio is in her late 10th year meaning that she doesn't really have much time left to live and I think that they even said like she only has like 3 or so months left until she is going to die so it is a very sad thing that's already being set up right away from the beginning of the game. And this also makes a lot more sense now because of how Mio is older than every other character and they also did talk about how Mio's tattoo is basically almost all grayed out whereas all the other characters still have a little bit of red on them. Now another interesting scene that we get to see is a whole bunch of these bodies that are inside of these like capsule things. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of this is. I don't know if these are like soldiers who have already passed away or if these are just other characters or something else but it is a really kind of weird looking scene and there's a whole bunch of bodies here so I wonder what's up with this. Now in terms of these antagonist characters as well as the wild ride character we get to see this infinity symbol which appears on them so like for one of them we can see here the infinity symbol is in its eye and then for the wild ride character the infinity symbol is on the body. We don't know exactly what this infinity symbol means but it is something that's a little interesting. Now we also got to see why the Xenoblade 3 logo does have particles coming out of it. Characters that do die will just straight up have particles just like infinity war coming out of them and vanish into the air so it's just a really kind of crazy scene to look at. And going off of that they also show how they use the deaths of all these soldiers on the battlefield to power up each side's flame clock. So we can see here for Kevis and Agnes just a whole bunch of these particles from all these people who are dying go into filling up these flame clocks. It's already a very dark setting that they're setting up for the start of this game. Now they did mention how the purpose of every character in this world is to just fight and become a soldier and they even show at like a young age you're just basically being trained to become a soldier and we can see here with young Noah, Lance and Yuni. Now they also mention how a majority of characters just die on the battlefield but if you do manage to live all the way until your 10th year you get a special ceremony from the queen as you die where you get to see like these special gold particles come out during the ceremony and it's not like you're safe even if you live all 10 years you're basically still going to die but you just get a special ceremony from the queen. Now in this image we get to see like Noah and his friends looking at a city in the distance. I don't know if this is like Alchemoth or just some new colony or city or something but it is an area that I'm pretty sure they haven't shown us yet. Now it also talks about how potentially Noah and Mio and the other characters may have all met where it looks like they were all given a mission and they end up fighting each other and that's pretty much looking like to be the beginning area where we're going to end up meeting these characters. Now during this part where Noah and Mio are still fighting against each other, that is when this Van Damme character appears and says to aim for Sword March because that's where the true enemy is. So it looks like all of this stuff is going to be happening very early into the game. 
Now the antagonist characters that I mentioned at the start of the video is looking like they're referring to them as the console and it looks like commanders from both sides of Kebes and Agnes are gonna have to report like which side won during a battle where we can see here like Ethel is here and it's looking like the other person is somebody from Agnes and they're reporting like who won the battle so it's looking like the console really could be the people who are in charge of like this entire world and kind of giving all the orders for exactly how everything plays out. Now they also show this new really pretty looking area and it's giving me a lot of Satoru Marsh and Uriah vibes so this is looking like it's going to be one of those areas where you're just going to want to walk around a lot and kind of admire how pretty it looks. They also showed the snow area and of course with the snow area they're always really pretty inside of Xenoblade games, Valak Mountain, Tantal, both of them are really nice so I'm sure this area is going to be amazing also. Now they also mentioned how as you're wandering throughout the world, you're just going to be seeing a lot of Kevis and Agnes troops fighting against each other so I guess you're going to be able to interrupt them and try to take them on and probably get some good items and stuff too so that is kind of interesting. Now they also mentioned how the world is divided up into colonies so it's looking like colonies are going to be like the big civilizations for all of these places and like the towns that you're going to find throughout the game. Now they also mentioned how there's something called the Faranus I'm pretty sure and that's like the heart of the colony and these are like really powerful machines that they use in combat and it's looking like that these are the ones that are powered up by the particles and the flame clock because we can even see them on there so it is something that's a little weird. And going off of that we can also see like this flame clock icon which appears in terms of these colonies so I'm guessing this is like the way that the development system works where the more quests you do and the more people you help out the more the flame clock is going to fill for each colony. I think that's going to be the way that you level it up. Now we also got to see the affinity chart between all the residents and that's looking like it's going to be very similar to Xenoblade 1's. It even has like the heart icon and things like that for affinity so it's looking very similar. Now in addition to the affinity chart, if we take a look at the bottom here, it does say Collectopedia card, which is looking like the Collectopedia is looking to be back inside of this game, so that is very exciting. I did enjoy the Collectopedia a lot in Xenoblade 1. I love trying to get all the items that were found in an area and getting items as rewards by completing a page, so I am happy that the Collectopedia is back in this game. Now it looks like you're going to have these campsites as rest spots and that's where you're going to be able to talk with your party members about side quests and accept them and probably get more details about where to go and things like that. We also got a little bit of gameplay with the boat so you are going to have a boat to be able to traverse the water so I am hoping that there's still some more vehicles and especially one where you can fly around because that would be a ton of fun. Here's also another magical fantasy type of looking area and I'm very happy that they're doing more of these types of areas because these are really the types of areas that I love inside of Xenoblade games. Just looking at these magical really pretty areas like Satoru Marsh, that's what I love the most so it is looking like Xenoblade 3 is going to have more of them which I'm very excited about. It also looks like you're going to be able to find supply drops throughout the world so I'm guessing these are like care packages that are going to be sent from Kevis and Agnes and you're going to be able to get some cool items. Now the navigation is also improved in Xenoblade 3, it was already really good in Definitive Edition with the dotted line telling you exactly where to go, but now you're going to be able to see the line in the world itself and it's going to be telling you exactly where to follow it so it's going to be very easy to know and people definitely won't be getting lost, but you're also going to have the option to turn it off if you want to just be able to explore yourself. Now the entire driver combo from Xenoblade 2 is in the game so you will be able to do break, topple, launch and smash. Now they didn't go too much into it but they did show us some more gameplay about the chain attacks so it looks like you're actually going to be able to give orders for which character and what you want them to do so I do wonder how exactly that's going to work and how you're basically going to be able to make sure that you can go again so I am very interested in that. Now it looks like the driver combo from Xenoblade 1 has actually been updated to include a new element so you're going to be able to do break topple days and then also this brand new one called burst and I guess that makes a lot of sense because of course the Xenoblade 2 one is break topple launch and smash so if the Xenoblade 2 one had four things and the Xenoblade 1 version only had three it wouldn't really be that fair so I guess they just added a new one to balance it out. Now there's also something called Master Arts and these are the ones that you give to the left side so I'm guessing they're going to be mapped to the D-pad and these are arts that you're basically going to have to master in terms of like a certain class and then you can give them and you can give Master Arts from different classes to other classes so like for example Noah could be like a sword fighter in his attacking class but if you've mastered like the healing class then you can give healing arts to that I'm pretty sure so that's pretty cool with how that's going to work. And going off of that they also showed how certain master arts are going to be able to fuse with the normal arts so basically if you pair the right ones together you're going to be able to do lots of cool effects and damage so that definitely sounds really cool. 
Now they also showed some new 7th party member hero characters, and of course these characters are not playable, but one of the characters that they did show us on the menus was actually blurred out by Nintendo, so now a lot of people are trying to guess who this spoiler character could be. Some people are saying it could be somebody from Xenoblade 1 or Xenoblade 2, others are saying it's just going to be a Xenoblade 3 character like Ethel, but a lot of people are trying to guess who it could be, so definitely be sure to comment down below and let me know who you guys think this spoiler character could be. Now with the extra 7th party member characters, even though you can't play as them, you are going to be able to give any of their classes to any of your main 6 characters, so you're going to be able to give the class to like Tyon or Yuni or Noah, Mio, whoever you really want, so even though you can't play as them, which is unfortunate, I do wish that you were just able to play as them and have like their own unique style instead of just being able to give their class to any of the other playable characters, but I think it is cool how at least you're going to be able to get their drip and you're also going to be able to get their weapons. Now in that cutscene when Noah and Mio are fighting at the start of the game, it looks like the Vandem character is responsible for doing the whole Ouroboros fusion where he basically has this whole machine that creates like this interlink and everything happens so I do wonder how exactly he's able to do that and what exactly the true purpose of that character is. Now while they haven't revealed if you can do Ouroboros forms in any combination with the 6 party members, they did reveal that every single Ouroboros is going to have 2 forms depending on who is in control. So like if we take a look at the Uni and Tyon one here, the one that has Booba on it is when Uni is in control, but when Tyon's in control, it looks like this. Now it looks like all of these Ouroboros forums are also going to have these massive skill trees, so you're going to be able to see here that you're going to have to do a lot of upgrading and grinding and stuff to be able to fill out them for all of these characters, so there is a ton of content that's in here. Now they also did mention that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is going to be getting an expansion pass as well. It is the same price as the one that the Xenoblade 2 one was for $30 and it does come with a big new story scenario at the very end. So it does look like to me that we are going to be getting Torna 2 and that makes me very very excited because Torna was amazing and it was basically an entire new game so I am very confident if they're charging the same price again it is going to be just to the same level that Torna was and that makes me very excited because looking at this picture here we get to see the Monado, the Aegis Sword and Noah Sword all here together so I can't wait to see what this extra story is going to be. Now they also did say that every amiibo is compatible with Xenoblade 3 so if you have a bunch of amiibo you can scan them all in and it's going to give you like some items and stuff that you can use on your adventure. And finally, in terms of exclusive amiibo stuff, if you scan in the Shulk amiibo into Xenoblade 3, you're going to get a Monado skin which you can give to Noah's sword, and so it's not going to give you like any exclusive arts or anything I'm pretty sure, but it's just a skin to basically make Noah's sword into a Monado, which is really cool. And so yeah, there you go guys, that is all the information that I was able to find inside of the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Direct. If you guys enjoyed this video, then definitely be sure to click that like button, and also comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this. How do you guys feel about the Xenoblade 3 Direct? Did I miss anything about it? Definitely be sure to comment down below and let me know. If you're new to this channel, then please be sure to subscribe. I'm definitely going to have some more Xenoblade content in the future, so definitely be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Click on that bell to become a part of the notification squad. Go follow me on Twitter at actual arrow so you can be featured in videos and also join my Discord server as well. We've got a bunch of people in there who are always talking about Pokemon and Smash Bros and Nintendo. So definitely be sure to join that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching.